And I believe that he has a word for us. So give me honor to whom honor is due. Let us give a very special harvest welcome to Reverend Dr. Michael Quay. Put your hands together. Let us celebrate the King of Kings one more time. Let's give God some, some praise in the house. You know, when, when you come to harvest, you, you need to be encouraged. Because of the kind of ministry that is here those of us that are coming from without we need a lot of encouragement and motivation the same ones that have been preached here and things that have been taught here sometimes when you are invited to come and speak you are really wondering okay is it a setup what am i going to say so when somebody comes here and you don't make the person tell somebody that you need to preach with the preacher today Tell somebody you need to help the preacher to preach today and, and and it's not funny because the teachings are happening in this place and yesterday and the day before when bishop clive mode was bulldozing his way through clearing the path i was excited that he was doing that because it makes my work easier when somebody becomes a pathfinder when you are driving on that same road you don't need to go through the bushes so i want to celebrate the ones that have come before me let's celebrate bishop clive mo celebrate the ministry of the bishop senior bishop clive mo celebrate him we thank god you have to get to a place where you understand that ministry is complementary that we sharpen each other we help each other's work become better but all this will not have been possible without the visionary leadership of our very own the ever humble ever green ever wonderful effervescent the quintessential reverend the bishop our reverend Fitzgerald I, I thought you would make him feel loved and wonderful Listen, ministry is so tough, ministry is so difficult. In our part of the world now, and in this modern time, doing ministry is, and finding the good church to go is even more difficult. So if God blesses you, you with a good pastor, a man that will love you, feed you, <laughs> pray for you, seek the face of God for your life, Amen. We want to celebrate you. We, we, we love you. Myself and my wife, we, we honor you dearly. Um, and not only you, we love you, mom. Thank you for being you. We celebrate you. We, we really honor you. Let's make mom feel loved as well. To marry a man of God is like having a house but opening it up. And so it's difficult. <laughs> oh Jesus, let me not go there because I have my wife here. Let me not let me not arm her. Amen. It's, it's beautiful. Amen. We also want to celebrate all the leaders, the elders, the pastors, all of you of Harvest International. Listen. My wife came here for the very first time today and her words were, the church is big and beautiful. I'm just quoting here, it's big and beautiful. But it really did sink in, it sunk in when I sat down and that word replayed in my heart. And I felt that a man who can only see visions, but if God, do, if God doesn't bring you handless of vision, 
people that will run with your vision your vision will turn into a nightmare so those of you that have made this vision a reality a possible visible wonderful reality to the world all the pastors the leaders every branch of harvest we salute you we celebrate and thank you very much for standing in with our father the father of the house amen hallelujah i came with very wonderful people came with um i have it will amaze you to know that i have my undercover people in the in the congregation and i'm not going to introduce them as the name suggests undercover so they are hidden so be careful be careful amen but we, we thank God for the ministries of um, Minister Steve, Minister Aiknano, Minister Dona, my own sons, the Nanayaos, the Abikus, Mrs. Super, Michael. I have two wonderful prophets who also came today. Prophets of God doing wonderful things. Prophet Eric Wine, Prophet Kwame Asante, wonderful people. And I came with my evergreen wife. I think I love the man. The man that has been waving the hand. I love you, sir. God bless you, sir. Just for the wave, God bless you more. In fact, may God double, multiple, wonderful bless you. Amen. She's been my wife for next two weeks will be 12 years so we are still young we pray that we can celebrate many years as rev and 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 go amen amen did you come with your bibles um today uh, i'm supposed to finish at 9:30. i'm going to stick to time if my bishop tells me to add five or ten or fifteen or twenty or thirty i'll be happy but I'll stick to time um, but if you came with your Bible could you please lift it with me today is Friday Monday is a holiday where are you rushing to where, where, where do you want to go as Christians we don't have clubs to go this is our club this is our home this is where we find joy and fulfillment and happiness how many of you have your Bibles with you could you please lift it up and say this is my bible it is the word of god i'll become what it says i can become i'll go where it says i can go i will achieve what it says i can achieve slap your chest and say i am a believer you can do it again say i am a believer now if the bible is yours could you please turn to the book of saint mark mark's gospel chapter number five mass gospel chapter number five if you found it already you can say i have it if you're still looking for it you can say wait for me all right i'm waiting hurry up it's in mass gospel chapter number five A reading from the th thunder indiction of the king james bible it reads and they came over unto let, let me let me even run through and go to the verse number 20 and Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I may touch but his clothes I shall be whole and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague and jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the presence said who touched my clothes and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude throng in thee and sayest thou who touched me and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing but the woman, fearing and trembling, 
knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will abide forever. We pray in this short time that we have, O oh God, give us a word that works. Anoint this lips of clay, O oh God. Make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody's life. Till the end, our voices shall be lifted in praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look for three people and tell them there must be a shift. Look for three people, tell them there must be a shift. Look for three people, tell them there must be. I think you look for only people that you know. Look for somebody you've never spoken to in church and tell the person there must be a shift. There must be a shift. If you look for three people and tell them there must be a shift, I'll be excited that you do that. In fact, let me increase the number to seven. Look for seven people. Tell them there must, there must be a shift. There must be a shift. Look for seven people. Tell them there must be a shift. There must, there must be a shift. 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 Hallelujah. There must, there must be a shift. There must be there must be a shift amen there must there must um, maybe your neighbor is um, a bit cold and is not that receptive but then you turn to your left and to your right and tell the person that i am bringing you a prophetic word there is going to be a shift look at somebody and say this is prophecy over your life there is going to be a shift uh, the prophecy over the house is that this is our year of total transformation and the theme is we are moving to the next level but i prophesy to you that there is going to be a shift that will take you to your next level can you prophesy to somebody and say i am bringing you a prophetic word there's going to be a shift that will take you to your next level if you've done that you can put your hands together clap your hands Give God a shout. You can sit on the neck of your adversaries if you want to. I told you that you need to encourage me to feel comfortable and confident to preach. If you come to Harvest International and you are not encouraged, you'll be intimidated. And the word and the rumor has been that you are going to a bourgeois church. I was told that I'm going to a bourgeois church, a church full of in high intellect, high brains, intellectuals. And I keep wondering, okay, why do you put fear in me before I even go there? And uh, luckily for me, I have known faces and I asked mom to be praying for me before I went up because I knew that people would be praying against me, but he, <laughs> she has to be praying for me. And I am seeing the faces of Pastor Eugene and the rest. I know people are praying for me. And I know you are praying for me too. But and look at somebody and say, help the preacher to preach tonight. Help the preacher to preach tonight. Amen. I, I have not lived for too long. I'm still a very young man. Only that I have four kids. And I've married for 12 years. So I'm young, but sometimes you go places and people look at you and say, oh boy. And I keep wondering, God, I think you would have done me some good if you have added some weight and muscles to my being. But although I've not lived for too long, I have come to a place where I've realized that most of the things that God will want us to have, a lot of times god will place them there but it will be in our own capacity to strive for it that determines whether we'll have it or not so a lot of the things it is said that life will not give you what you deserve but it will give you what you fight and battle for 
So in life, there are many things and many things will be aligned around you. On your journey to destiny fulfillment, you'll find out that God will place a lot of things on that journey, but they will not come to you because you have a magnetic field around you. They will come to you because you strive for them. Um, I read the works of Professor P. Wembley of um, the Interdenominational Theological Institute, and he said, and I quote that the transitory human redemptive process is only possible when you get to a place when you see that change is no longer voluntary, but mandatory. Probably let me rewind and press play. He said the transitory human redemptive process is only possible when a human being gets to a place when you see that change is no longer voluntary, but mandatory. That is to mean that you have to get to a place where you know that you are above where you are. You are bigger than the hole you are in so that you push yourself out of that hole that brings you that liberation until you get to a place where you know that you are bigger than where you are. You are stronger than where you are. And God has placed much more potential and capacity over your life. You stay in a place that is beneath you and you blame every other person but yourself. Somebody did a work on value and worth. And the work of the person, um, um, somebody who spent his life time in prison. And when the person w was out, he wrote on life's worth of value and meaning. And somebody asked him, there was a press launch, and they asked him, why was somebody who is in prison or who just came out of prison, will write whilst he is in prison something about life's value, worth, and meaning? And they asked him, did you find value, worth, and meaning whilst you were in the prison cells? He looked at them and said, I did not find value, worth, and life's meaning whilst I was in the prison. Uh, but when I was in the prison and I looked at myself and my potential and my capacity, and I saw that my life has been restricted to the four walls of a prison gate, I told myself that my life is bigger than where I am and I can't stay here any longer. I began to do an introspection and I saw that I was bigger than the hole that they have placed me in. He said, when I saw that, I started working on myself to get out of that hole. I just came to speak to somebody who has done an introspection and you know that this is the time for you to move to your next level because where you are is beneath your life potential and ability and capacity that the Lord has placed on your life is there anybody in this place who knows that God has placed something bigger on your life something stronger on your life and that where you are is beneath where God has placed you I just came to prophesy to about two of you I did not come to talk to everybody I came to speak to a few if you know that where you are you are bigger and stronger I bring you a prophetic word and I say that from today may God move you out of that place Place and move you to your next level I bring you this word of prophecy may the Lord God move you from where you are and send you to your next level can I can I preach to you I, I chose the book of St. Mark's gospel chapter number five uh, because of the importance of the test and where it is placed in history uh, Mass gospel happens to be the first according to new testament criticism it is the first of the books ever written in the new testament it is placed where it is placed because of the historicity of the book of matthew matthew is able to connect us all the way back to the times of abraham it dates us it dates, uh, takes us back to the time of abraham and so those that sat and constituted and canonized the bible had to place matthew first because of the historicity and place the book of mark where it is but the book of mark is an interesting book and it it, it, it brings so much joy and and passion to my heart anytime i read that book because of the painting it paints jesus the book of Mark introduces Jesus as this demon busting, ghost chasing, um, a man that does not fear anything, a man that goes out there and when there is a problem, he doesn't wait for things to fall in place, he goes there and immediately things happen. The book of Mark portrays Jesus as an action man, a man that when he gets to a place, demons bow and demons cry for help and they pray to him and they say, son of man, have you come to destroy us before our time? When he gets to a place, things begin to happen and things fall in place i just came to introduce the action jesus to somebody today that what you have been believing god for may jesus who is full of action get into your space and your life and your time that immediately things will start aligning themselves to your advantage i prophesy to somebody in this space and in this realm in this house right now that may things begin to fall where they ought to fall may the action jesus get into your space 
the book of saint mark's gospel introduces jesus as the action man more specifically you get to the chapter number five and the bible says jesus had crossed over before he crossed over the tempestuous storms and the raging seas that had come against him and the bible says that he got up and looked at it and said peace be still that means that no matter the storms the devil throws at you there is a storm come there is somebody that brings peace to your life when there is turbulence and turmoil around your life there is a jesus that when he stands up he said may the lord stand up and calm every raging sea and tempestuous storm some of you are going through storm but may today mark the beginning of calmness and peace in your life the bible said jesus said peace be still and after jesus had crossed and Jesus, you move to chapter number five. My Bible says that there was a man that has been afflicted and inflicted by demons. And most of the time when you read the text, you, we begin to um, throw that word to only people who are without the commonwealth of faith. Scratch that because that can happen to even the anointed. Sometimes you can be anointed and afflicted. Sometimes you can be the called of God chosen by god and yet go through the valleys of the shadow of death sometimes you can be the one that god has said i'm going to lift you up and you see that everything is coming down at you so the anointed can be afflicted the anointed can be conflicted the anointed can be attacked the anointed can come under siege but the bible say many are the afflictions of the righteous Mm -hmm. but the lord god shall deliver him uh-huh you'll get there but 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 jesus had crossed over the seas and had met a man that the bible says society had given up on him society has said nothing good is going to come out of this guy he he is done he's finished nobody should have anything to do with him because the man is afflicted with demons on a lower scale you're talking about three thousand demons on a more normal scale you're talking about six thousand demons but whether it's three thousand or six thousand the man was heavily possessed he was so possessed that not even family members would go and visit him society had given up on him everybody had given up on him and he was left out to die but when Jesus crossed the sea, the Bible says, when the man had seen Jesus lifted up whatever you could lift just to attack the man that was coming at him. But this demon busting Jesus, this, this, this demon chasing, this powerful man walked up to the man and the Bible said the man fell and asked for help. Jesus healed the man. I'm just running through my introduction, man of God, so that I can get to my test because jesus healed the man and the man said unto jesus jesus i just want to follow you what you have done in my life is so wonderful is so I, I am blessed i just want to hang around in your presence i i know what society did to me i don't want to go back to those people i don't want to go back to them because they i am from them um, jesus was saying to the man no you can't follow me he says, no, no, no i am from they, they are the same people who gave up on me they left me here to die jesus said unto no i can't i can't let you follow me because sometimes the people that rejected you are they are the same people i need to send you to because the lord will take you out of the people and still send you back to the same people now jesus said unto the man although you have expressed interest in following me i can't allow you to follow me. i believe the man was as curious as myself you are looking for disciples i am a volunteer why don't you want me to follow you jesus said no go to your homeboys go to your own people don't follow me about go to your own people why because jesus wanted this man to be his walking billboard now watch the test jesus said go to your people and tell them what has happened to you when they see you they will know what i have done in your life when you follow me they, the people where we will go the people might not know your history but when you go to them they will know that the stones that the builders rejected that has become the head corner stone i pray that anybody that has been rejected anybody that has been confused and left for dead may the lord lift you up and pick you is there any walking billboard in the house that people rejected and abandoned you but you are the one the lord is choosing and sending 
standing out there for his glory i came to prophesy to somebody before i get into my test that in 2018 may the lord make you his walking billboard that wherever you go people will look at you and see the transformation that has happened in your life for them to know that you have actually moved to your next level can i get out of my introduction now jesus had walked out told the guy go back and whilst jesus was on an assignment the bible says and a sudden woman anytime i read the test i i get excited about it because um, the name of the woman is not mentioned and if you do any writing or you study any form of literary work so they teach you how to write they will tell you that anonymity of a test suggests inclusiveness of the writer I'll probably rewind and press play uh, many times a writer omits a name he's saying that i am omitting the name so that when he gets there and the story suits you you can put your name there so anonymity of a test suggests inclusiveness of the writer the writer knew that a time will come that somebody like myself will get to a place where i will have a similar story so that i will put my name where the story is maybe there is somebody here who has been going through hell and hard water you you've been through so many things and the devil had, 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 had demoralized you the devil had thrown everything he has at you but you can put your name there as far as this woman is concerned the bible says and a certain woman who had been afflicted with the issue of blood for 12 years and anytime i hear a preacher preach this test i always hear the length of a struggle and the length of a struggle because we talk about how long the lady had been in that kind of predicament but the 12 years is stated that not just to show you the length of a problem but the scope of her limitation because in those days medicine was not advanced such that um it, it the farthest a, a person can go or the longest of time somebody can live with such a disease was 12 years the lady had gotten to a point where she knew that at this point it is either i get it or i die she had gotten to a point that she knew that i shouldn't care about my environment or whoever is around this is my time for me to get either my healing or go home and get ready to die and i can tell you that if you really want to move to your next level you have to have that mindset that this is the time for me to get to my next level it is either now or never until a man gets to a place where you have that mandatory kind of thinking you know that i have it i need it i desire it i deserve it and i'm going after it it doesn't come to you the woman knew that this is the point that she either lives or dies so the woman was not bothered about whoever was around the bible says and a woman with an issue of blood and i like the story of the woman because the woman had no invitation understand that the understand that jesus was on his way to go and heal somebody and so the lady broke protocol the lady was a gate crusher the lady was not observing the protocols around jesus she knew that there are people that will be around that will not want her to have it but how desperate are you to get what you want from jesus oftentimes we get to church and i'll get there because you see the bible says that there were many people around jesus a lot of people were thronging him the scripture says king james bible and many people were thronging him and yet a woman got her healing there were many people that were requiring desiring praying for a healing from jesus but not all of them or not any known face or name or person is registered to have had it why because coming around jesus does not mean you get something from him it is what you do when you get around jesus that determines what you get when you are around jesus and so when you get to church there are many people that will jump around and shout and lift up their hands and sing but not everybody will get something from him because when you come around jesus it is not about thronging him it is about touching him 
So we have people. We have people that throng him. But very few people touch him. That is why when you go to church, you cannot behave like everybody else is behaving. That is why when nobody is jumping and screaming, it doesn't mean you should also sit and cross your legs. That is why when nobody is giving God praise, uh, I, I pray that a time will come that when we get to church, before even somebody lifts up the microphone to lead opening prayer, people will kneel before the altar and start touching Jesus. People will kneel and start touching Jesus. Before somebody even lifts up worship, people will kneel and somersault and start praising him. Because it is not about thronging him, it's about touching him. I pray that a new generation of believers will emerge who are not um, driven by communal or corporate worship because we live in a time in, an, in a dispensation or in an era where people feel motivated to do things based on what others are doing but I am praying that we'll get to a place where the spirit of David will come back to us and David encouraged himself in the Lord when you get to a place where you know that if nobody else will worship I will where you get to a place where you know that for me and my house we will worship the lord if nobody will come to church because it is raining i will go and touch jesus because i know what i want from him and i know what he can do to me i really pray that we'll get to a point in our lives as christians where we know that it's not about communal or corporate worship it's not about what we do when we are together when everybody gathers and we sing a congregational hymn the last time i checked the last time i checked worshiping god is idiosyncratic it is not what others do that you will be judged thereby it is what you do in the presence of god so when nobody is here to worship i will want to come and worship is there anybody in the house who is a worshiper who has you known what god has done for him and he'll worship god erased i don't know when i'm still in harvest but i pray that god will raise a new breed of people who will understand that it's about touching him and not thronging him it's about touching him it's not about thronging him it's about touching him it's not about thronging him so we have people who go to church and they will only walk up before because others are walking up but they will not get to a place where they know they are God and they have that inclination and motivation and inner drive that tenacity that ebullience that thing that gets out of their spirit that the Bible says and those that believe in him out of their bellies shall flow it is not without them the bellies is the fountain that that the waters do flow from I pray that we will get to that place as a church I, I keep praying for people because you see I believe that the only time we can make impact in our world is when we are able to touch God individually the social loafing in church is too much whereby people can pray until they see others pray but the last time I checked, the man called Elijah buried his head in between his knees and, and history says he prayed for 17 hours and he said, can I help? I want you to get ready and go home. The Lord has not told me it's about to rain, but I've communicated with God of the heavens and I can hear the sound of abundance of rain that if you don't go, I tell you as a prophet that rain is going to come. Can I pray for somebody right now? There is rain that is going to come. God is going to open the floodgates of the heavens and shower upon you the rains of heaven may the lord lift you up as never been before look, look at somebody and say he's talking to me look at somebody and say he's talking to me and the bible says the woman with the issue of blood ah society had given up on her because nobody wanted to have anything to do with this lady actually if the lady meets you and shakes your hand be considered or regarded unclean so there was uncleanness around her there was everything about her was impure she was wallowing in imperfection 
everything about her was stinking i believe that she had given everything that she had the bible says that and she had tried and visited every specialist that she had known she had consulted the people that were using herbals <laughs> she had consulted the, the people that were into um medicinal practice they she's contacted contacted everybody but the bible says her issues grew worse do you know let me sermonically pause and say that do you know that oftentimes what is god giving and what is God answered it will always grow worse in the hands of people. If God says he's the one that will be your source for your elevation. If you try to get help from people, your life becomes even more miserable. That is why David said, when I lift up my eyes onto the hills, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh. Is there anybody who knows that nobody can help you? But the Lord God himself. I pray that may the Lord show up and help you. There is somebody under the sound of my voice. The only one that can help you is God. That is why whoever you try to talk to disappointed you. She tried. She spent money, but everywhere she went, her issues grew worse. If God says the one that you should look up to for your survival, stability, success, significance, for your elevation, and you move towards people, and you start cajoling, lobbying, telling people to help you, they leave you in a more miserable state than you could have ever imagined. The Bible says that and everybody the woman got in touch with, the woman could only spend money, but the issue grew worse. Can I start preaching to you now? The Bible says, and when she heard, because it was rumored, <laughs> I read that test and man of God, I, um, I, I read that test every time and something strikes in me um, and a holy anger gets into my spirit. The Bible says, and when she heard that Jesus was passing by, I, I, I get very angry when I read that test because these days we don't have rumors of Jesus passing by. We have rumors of men of God passing by. We have rumors of people that are telling us how powerful their waters are, how anointed their creams are, how powerful their oils are. And so we have people parading our street telling us how they can sell the red oil, blue oil, green oil. But if we really want salvation and redemption in our time, the name of Jesus must be lifted up. The Bible says, if you lift my name up, I will draw all men to myself. I pray that may you be a conduit that Jesus will showcase his glory through. Look at somebody and say, the name of Jesus must be lifted. C can I preach to you now? When it was rumored that Jesus was passing by, how, when was the last time you heard a man of God getting time on radio and not projecting or presenting himself and telling you where he worships and where he fellowships and how if you get to him you'll get a lot of number or you get money instantly and so we have turned the gospel into an instant machine a fax machine an ATM machine whereby we don't believe but 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 Jesus let me tell you this before I continue before I forget Jesus is not interested in your deliverance he is interested in your development can, can I rewind and press play Jesus is not interested in your deliverance he is interested in your development what do you mean young man because if a man is de delivered and not developed yet, he will go back into that same miserable state. But he calls you and he develops you so that nobody will cast demons from your life. But you will be the demon caster yourself. So that you say in my name, you shall cast out devils. Jesus, is there anybody the Lord is developing into an end time general, a warrior for the gospel? Somebody who go out there and prove to the world that Jesus is still. I don't know, maybe, um, am I still in, in harvest? Okay. I know you helped me to preach. Because um, the Lord is always interested in how he will develop you. 
The Bible says that as long as the heir is still a child, although he owns everything, he still remains a slave. And so there are so many royals who are living like slaves, not because they are not numerically old, but because they are not spiritually developed yet. Because they still have the mindset of get an oil and get deliverance. But you see, the deliverance a man will get is never in an oil. The color of an oil is inconsequential to your development. We are moving to the next level. I want to preach this because... Because you see... You read the account, First Samuel chapter number 10. The Bible says, and, and he had picked a vial of oil and poured it upon the head of Saul and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his people? First Samuel chapter 10, the verse number 1 is what I just read to you. Now, when you read from the verse number 4, the Bible says that and he said to them, When you are coming down, you see people coming down, prophets coming down, with tablets, with cymbals, with harps, with flutes, and they are worshiping. The Spirit of God will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and you will be turned to another man. What the prophet Samuel was telling the man called Saul is that your transformation is not in the oil I poured on you yes, so the oil does not transform it is when a child of God aligns himself with a man in authority the Bible says that people were coming from the hills of God so they were people that were anointed and placed in authority by God he said when you meet them there will be an alignment and so when you come to you see, I have a problem with people who run around looking for a prophet to prophesy to them. When you come to Harvest Chapel, when you are in Harvest International, and you align yourself with the reverend, the prophet, the angel of the house, there is a divine alignment, and the spirit comes upon you. And when you speak in alignment, there is a transformation. You see, when we talk about total transformation our yearly theme the theme of this year total transformation it's not going to come because we have anointed you it will come because you have aligned and you are speaking the language of the said man watch the word he said and the spirit of the prophet shall come upon you you shall prophesy with them and so as they are prophesying you are prophesying you are not waiting for the prophet to prophesy you are prophesying with them and as you prophesy with them the spirit will come upon and you shall be changed to another man and so that change is done by god through you in alignment with your said man i'm not i have some minutes i have some minutes and so my bishop said i had time i still have time thank you bishop because because i'm still in my introduction and so <laughs> now, now, now watch 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 the test please sit if you stand you make me feel that i have to close sit. now watch the test even as it unfolds the bible says that i'm the woman when she had heard that Jesus was passed, she said to herself, psychologists say that never talk to yourself. There is a school of thought in psychology, psychiatric evaluation and analysis. They will tell you that never talk to yourself. Because if you talk to yourself, there is a tendency that you are losing it. There is another school of thought psychologists and they say you can talk to yourself but when you talk to yourself don't answer because if you talk to yourself and you answer the questions you you ask it means that you you've lost it probably a long time but you see i don't believe in any of those schools of thought because i've come to a place in my life where i've realized that you get to a place where you have to talk to yourself and tell yourself that although the fig tree will not blossom and there will be no fruit in the vine you get to a place in your life that
that nobody is giving you an encouragement and you look in the mirror and you say to yourself baby girl you are still beautiful uh, you are still on point do not give up on yourself yet they tell look at you and they tell you that you are growing old and your biological clock is ticking and when are you going to get married don't you think you are getting old you look at yourself and you tell yourself that the race is not to the swift not the battle to the strong not bread to the wise not favor to the man of understanding but time and chance happen is there anybody in this place who is talking to herself right now that you shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath the first and not the last you have to get to a place the bible says and the woman talked to herself and she said if a conditional clause those of you that have done english i i went to a site also my english is poor and and i grew up in a zongo so i'm poor but she uses a conditional clause and said if there are people around but uh, i need this and i need it badly you see a desire must drive you into a point of desperation and your desperation should move into a point of obsession that you tell yourself that even though there are there this river is crocodile infested i will still swim across and get what i want you see you have to get to that place in your life where you don't take no for an answer the woman said if i may touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole and the bible says she spoke to herself she said to herself if i may and i keep wondering if anybody had heard the lady if the lady had spoken aloud if the lady even thought aloud and somebody had heard the lady say that the first thing they would have said is you don't even have the energy to go because you see i i i, I when, when i i like drawing when i was young i am in class when they are writing notes i wouldn't do notes i would draw so i like drawing so most of the time i think in pictures i'm not able to think like most of most of you are very well aligned um i think in pictures and so when i see the test and the woman is talking to herself i paint a portrait in my mind and i'm wondering if the lady had seen the multitude thronging and the lady was speaking to herself in her weak state understand somebody that has been hemorrhaging for 12 years is a weak person she's lost a lot of energy and blood and so i'm looking at this feeble weak looking lady i'm seeing multitude thronging jesus and still having that um that conviction that my healing is touching why did the lady not say if i touch the shoulder but she said if i touch the hem because the lady knew that at this point i can't match the people boot for boot but if i can crawl in the legs i might be able to get closer whilst everybody is looking on this direction i can look at through the other direction you see when god wants to bring you a miracle he gives you a vision nobody has seen before i pray that from today he will open your eyes to see something is there anybody in this place may the lord open your eyes to see something that others are not seeing what will bring you your deliverance and your movement to your next level is to see what others are not seeing the bible says the woman said if i may touch and i want to preach to you today on shift from this angle so whatever i you have written roll over now watch the test i told you my theme is shift because most of the time you have to not only shift perspective or focus most of us the reason why we don't get what god has for us is because we are looking for our results in the wrong places we are expecting somebody will say that if jesus will lay hands on me the lady was not looking for jesus to lay hands so oftentimes our problem is where our focus and our emphasis are the bible says 
the woman did three things there are three things the lady did the first thing the lady did was that she talked to herself i call it the three t's she talked to herself the second thing the lady did was that he touched the hem the lady not only talked but he took a step the problem with christianity in our time is that although we have the desire to move to the next level we just talk it and not do it our actions do not commensurate our talks so we have a lot of people who do the talking and not walk the talk we have people who only say that if i may touch but they fail to realize that jesus is moving and you have to move to touch him the woman said if i may touch the hem of his garment i shall be made well and you might have and treat that on the surface until you understand the history of the hebrew men um, in those days uh, the hebrew men will always wear an outer coat <laughs> the outer coat was called the talit when a hebrew man dresses up he will put on something called the talit the outer coat beneath the talit are little tassels they tie tassels those of you that have seen the prayer shawls you see tassels tied at the very end of the 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 the, the prayer shawl um or the, the the prayer shawl what do you call it um, um the prayer shawl will have the 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 little tassels in those days the men of hebrew descent when they dress up they will put on themselves an outer coat and the outer coat called the talit will have the little tassels the little tassels are called the zizit and so every outer coat called the talit will have a zizit underneath the zizits were representations of the word and the law of god zizit is also always a representation of the law of god and so i have read and i've heard preachers preach it and they say that the woman went and touched the hem of jesus's garment but if you understand the garment and how their garments were and it was the hem it means that the lady did not touch a fabric but the, the lady touched a zit zit or the tassels and the tassels represented or stood for the word or the laws of god it means that the lady was not going to look for the hands of jesus to be laid but when the lady was approaching jesus she was going to touch a word that comes from god maybe the word the woman touched was that by his stripes i am healed is there anybody who has a word to touch today there is a word that i know that somebody is here to touch today and the word that probably is loose at the end of the zizit or the talit is that no weapon formed or fashioned against you shall I, I feel like preaching to somebody because you see the hem of his garment represents the law or the word of god and the word the woman touched that worked for her and so it means that when you go to the house of god you should touch something that works for you maybe what the lady touched that worked for her was that i shall not die because it was about the scope of her limitation on the 12 year if she doesn't get well she was about to die and so maybe she touched the word on the garment that said that you shall not die but live and declare the oracles of God is there anybody touching the word of God today and I came to prophesy to you that you shall not die but live and declare the oracles of God is that word helping somebody or working for somebody if you are somebody that the enemy is coming out after you I came to bring you another word from the zizit of God that a thousand shall fall on your left ten thousand shall fall on your right it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked this place is weak can i talk to somebody right now yea though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death you shall fear no evil maybe this place can i can i prophesy to somebody here i, I just want to prophesy to somebody the woman touched a word not cotton not linen not wool she touched the hem and the hem is the zit zit the little tassels which is a representation of the law and the word of god what brings people deliverance and healing is what they touch when they are around jesus if you touch the right word he said your word is a light to my feet and a lamp onto my path 
I, I thought this place is a word based church is there anybody who has been touching the word all this time when you've joined harvest international have you been touching a word yet I, I just came to tell somebody a word that i just touched right now that the lord blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply replenish your earth and subdue it from today may you move into your place of transformation may you move to your next level i bring you a word of prophecy may the lord move you to your next level can you touch three people and tell them he's talking to me look for three people tell them he's talking to me Shut your anything that the woman touched the hem so if you're not mindful you will think the woman was touching linen or cotton but the woman was touching the zit zit of god so as a child of god you go through stages and phases in your life when everybody will forget about you and nobody will even give you a handout but if you check your account the bible says if my father and my mother will forsake me the lord god will never if i touch that word if i touch the word that says that the lord god will supply all my needs is there anybody touching a word today that the lord will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory maybe you are downtrodden or forsaken he said that i was caused men to ride over our heads we will walk through water and through fire but now oh god has brought us into our wealthy place i brought a prophetic word to somebody last life today that may god land you to your wealthy place may god push you into your wealthy place may the lord move you into your place of abundance may the lord god move you himself it is what you touch that determines what you get when you come to church what have you been touching I realize that people who change church and they keep saying I've been going to harvest a long, a long time and I'm not getting a breakthrough are part of the multitude who are thronging but not touching they come around but they are not touching the lord yet because in this place is power there were people that were around jesus the all-powerful god and yet they never got healed but when the lady touched the hem of his garment i pray that god will raise a new breed of people who when they come to church they will touch jesus they will touch their heart what have you been touching all this while can i get you to look for seven people Give them a high five and ask them what have you been touching all this while what have you been touching all this while what have you been touching come on walk around to somebody do not sit down walk around to somebody and ask the person what have you been touching what have you my pastor and my pastor doesn't pick up and when I need a pastor to come pastor was not available and because of that I am upset and I'm stopping I'm leaving the church although I've been serving in church pastor does not take notice of me Jesus was passing by the lady did not need a recognition the lady saw something she needed rubbed up in the physical body the physicality of jesus could be attacked and touched and killed but he carried an incorruptible seed the lady did not see the cor corruptibility of his body or of his persona the lady saw the virtue that was wrapped up in the earthen vessel so the lady was not looking at whether jesus was looking her way whether Jesus was going to give her attention whether Jesus was going to be compassionate on her the 
the lady cared less. Your maturity determines your level of dependency. Can I rewind and press play? Your maturity level and your dependency gauge have a direct relationship. The more matured you are, the less dependent you are on people. The matured Christian does not need the father of the house, the bishop of the house. You don't need the bishop to call you on your birthday for you to feel loved. Because of the immaturity of Christians of our age, pastoring is the most difficult job now. Because now, you are not only preparing the people for heaven, you are managing their emotions. We have turned pastoring into an emotional management classroom. <laughs> look at somebody and say he's talking to me oh no no come on look at somebody he just he just talked to me right now he spoke a word to me right now the more matured you are the less dependent you become are you following the woman knew what the man that has been rumored that he was passing was carrying did not need to know the man she needed to experience what the man had can i tell you my last tea and because i'm supposed to close at 9 30 and i have five minutes i have time now watch the test the bible says the woman talked the first tea the second tea the woman touched the last tea is that the woman took herself so she talks she touches she takes the woman did not wait to be given the woman took what she needed from jesus i am believing god that a new generation will come that can take from the lord whatever the lord has destined for their lives whatever god has placed on your life before eternity and before time when you come around jesus you can take it whatever the enemy has also taken from you i pray that you take it back right now may you take back that marriage the devil stole may you take it back take it back take it back may the lord give you the ability to take the woman did not only talk the woman touched did not wait to be given she took herself did not ask for permission to take it because when she saw that divine protocol had been observed what do you mean by that she did not ask people to be given an appointment she touched a word because he has lifted his word above his name when the woman touched the word of god the woman was able to release from God what was kept in eternity and before time for her. I pray that as you've touched the word, may whatever has been designed for you be released for your life. May the Lord place on. Can I prophesy? Let me stand here and prophesy. I prophesy upon you that whatever the Lord has said is given to you, may the Lord place it on your life. Look at somebody and say, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. Look at somebody and say, I'm taking it, taking it, taking it, taking it. Can you look for three people? Tell them I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Look for three people. Just tell them I'm, I'm taking it. Look for somebody and say, From today, I won't wait to be given. I am taking whatever is mine. Say, I am taking whatever is mine. Say, I can't wait any longer. It is make or break time. And I am taking it right now. Say, I am taking it right now. I am taking it right now. I pray that the 
Can you take it? Take it. Take it. Take it. Take whatever the Lord. I hear in the realm of the spirit. The Lord speaking to my hearing. That whatever the enemy has stolen from my people. It is recovery time. May you take it right now. Take it right now. May the Lord give you back your joy. May the Lord give you back that marriage. May the Lord give you back that relationship. May the Lord give you back that business. Whatever the enemy stole from you, may the Lord bring it back to you. Right, I prophesy to somebody, maybe not everybody, but somebody here. Whatever the enemy stole from you, may the Lord give it back. Now watch this. There were many people but it was the lady that in recorded history had her miracle the beauty of that test is and as a preacher and a man sent by god to bring you this word i know this word might not be for everybody but it's just for somebody who knows that you've taken all that you can take and at this time you've had enough of it you are not going to go another day with that condition and whatever it is you are taking it from the master you see in moving to the next level it is that desperation in your spirit that breaks you loose from the shackles of the yesterdays and the yesteryears that what you couldn't do in the years gone by from today may god give you the ability I, I sense in, in my spirit the Lord is telling me that some of you are receiving something because you see you are taking whatever the enemy had stolen from you now watch the test the Bible says and Jesus asked them who touched me so it means many can be around but very few can touch the Bible says and he said who touched me and out of a carnal inquest I say it's an inquest because they asked him a question out of a very carnal inquest he asked Jesus there are multitudes around you and you still have the guts to ask who touched me carnality will always open the worms not only of uncertainties but also of confusion Jesus looked at them and the Bible says that they did not know that something had left him it means that and, and, and I'm sermonically concluding it means there are some things that can leave the heavens without the heavens approval okay you didn't get it here let me try and let, let me try here maybe you will understand something left Jesus without Jesus permitting it it means some things can leave the heavens without the heavens approval okay I, I think this place people are getting let, let me try it here whatever is yours whether the heavens are letting it go or not may you receive what is yours in 2018 may the lord give unto you I, I don't know maybe maybe i'm preaching to myself today maybe i'm preaching to myself because jesus did not say that you go although he was all knowing although he was omnipotent it means there are certain keys that unlocks the mysteries of the heavens and i realize that it is our desperation that opens the doors to supernatural provisions the bible says and jesus said something has left me i read that test the first time i read that test it arrested my conscience it pinned down my intellect and i began to wonder so the all-knowing god almighty god can lose something without his approval 
it left him he said virtue had gone out of him. the good had left him and yet he did not approve of it and when the woman saw what was done in her and what she had done she ran back to him and told him all the truth I don't have time but truth is not perspective they say that in every story there's what you believe in there's what I believe in and there is the truth what they are saying is that they are shading contest of perspectives but truth is not perspective truth is the standard of God in the affairs of men so the woman was telling her him the standards of God that although you did not ask me to come for it I could sense in my spirit that is this is my moment to move to my next level and even if you have not called me for it I am coming to harvest tonight to receive what will move me to my next level whatever you came here to receive may the Lord hand it over to your life whatever you are here for may the Lord place it on you is there anybody in this house tonight who knows that God has placed that and virtue went out of Jesus the Bible says Jesus knew that virtue had left him what moves men to the next level is when divine virtue leaves the divine realm hits the life of a natural man and transfix or transports the man from where he is to where he ought to be from today may the supernatural mind of God I'm, 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 I'm closing just lift your hands I just want to pray because if I if I if I don't end it I am known for preaching everlasting sermons I can keep you here all night and we'll close at 5 a.m. <laughs> you know I'm a teacher and teachers we like talking lift up your right hand I, I, I just want you to get to a place tonight where you are not just talking but you are touching where you are not only talking and touching but you are talking touching and taking some of us our marriages have been denied for a long time today you want to talk touch and take it some of us our finances we get so close and yet there are mess ups all over the place you get very close to a breakthrough and last minute we are sorry denied today or tonight I want you not just to talk to God or talk to yourself but I want you to touch the hem touch a word there are a lot of words in scripture that you can touch today there's a word that if you are looking for a divine provision Bible says that and he blessed them with silver and gold or he brought them out with silver and gold and there was no one feeble person in their ranks or amongst their tribes so if you are looking for a breakthrough there is a word to touch the word is you shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory that's a word you can touch another word you can touch is one of my favorite portions of scripture the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want is a word you can touch God you said I shall not want I've gotten to a place where I need this thing and I need it badly and as I am talking to you I am touching you and as I'm touching you I am taking from the heavens whether the heavens know it is my time or not I am get crushing but I'm taking it is there anybody who is ready for this help this young man for me Okay. thank you Jesus I need to minister to some people lift up your right hand I, I, I want us to pray beloved people of God at this point what God is waiting on you for is that you will take from the heavens 
are there takers in the house takers just believe in God for takers people who are ready to take people who are saying to themselves I am ready to take from the heavens please lift up your right hand you have been going through that condition for 12 years <laughs> And 12, I told you, is figurative. It stands for the scope of a limitation. And that time is not only the length of a problem, but the scope of it. If you don't get the breakthrough now, maybe your rent is expiring. So you need it now. That was how desperate the lady had gotten. So the lady could talk to herself. The lady could touch the hem. The lady could take from God. I have only one prayer point and I'll be through with you. Then I'll start praying for some of you. Lift up your right hand and say with me, say, Lord Jesus. As I lift up my voice tonight and as I begin to pray, I touch your word. Your word of provision. Your word of preservation. Your word of protection. Your word of elevation. Your word of lightening up your word of illuminating your word of lifting as i lift up my voice i touch the word i touch the word the word that will set me apart the word that brings the testimony the word that brings the miracle as i lift up my voice and as i begin to pray i take everything that the enemy has stolen from me i take it all i take it all i take it all lift up your voice and begin to take it lift your voice and begin to take it lift your voice and begin to take it come on lift your voice and begin to take it come on let your voice be lifted and begin to take it thank you for listening to the message Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.